Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be building cool dynamic cards using React and Tailwind. So as you can see, we have here five cards, which I'm rendering dynamically in React. And then when I go near them, they spread out and on hovering over each individual card, they slide up and they have this smooth animation. Now the design for this, I was inspired from this, this, this dribble design by Vitali Daroska. So sorry if I incorrectly pronounced your name, but uh, he really did a great job. So this is the full design. Now I'll add a link to his design and also you can go check him out. You can follow him. And yeah, I have seen his other works as well. He does some crazy designs. So yeah, thanks to your amazing design. So we're going to be, we're going to be building this in React and we're going to be using Tailwind. So the source code of this is down in the description. So make sure to download, play with it, use it anywhere you like. And yeah, that's it. So without any delay, let's get started and let's learn how to build it. Here I am in my VS code where I've installed React and then I've also integrated Tailwind with that. So, so this is the app.jsx file, which I have removed the, all the unnecessary stuff. So in the app.jsx, first we're going to add the boilerplate of this, and then we're going to style it. So we're going to give it a width and height of 100 viewport height, remove any overflow, set the background as black, and then add everything at the center using Flexbox. And I think that's it. And then we're going to import our cards component. Now, since the card component doesn't really have anything, let's create the basic value plate. I've also added a dummy image as of now, just so that I can show you how the static component would render out. So there's that. And then let's add the card inside here. So let's see how it looks. So as of now, everything is blank empty since the reason for that is we don't have any content. So let's start by understanding how the card component would be. So we have the main div, which would have the class as flex, flex column with justify center, and then would add some padding. And the reason for adding flex column is because as you can see in the design, you'd see that they're stacked on top of each other. So we'd have it as flex call, and then we'd have border radius, text wide, overflow to hidden. And then we're going to start off with the content. Now the content would have a Z index of 10. I'll just explain you in a bit why this is so. And then also the flex, uh, so the content would be flexed row and then items and everything would be center aligned using item center. And then here we have justify between. The reason for that is because if you look at the header, which we're gonna be building now. So we have some spacing and then the left content is at the left corner and then the right one is at the right. So for that, we have justify between. And then inside of that, we have um, some of the stuff. So first we have the content, which is H2, wherein we have some text font bold paragraph, which says star allies. And then after that, we have a div for the rating, which is this. So for that, we have a background flex with item center. We're going to have some padding left, padding right, and also from top and bottom. Rounded of 3XL, some gap, and then we're going to start with the icon. Now the icon would have a fixed width and height, and then the content would be at the center using display, create, and place content to center, and then the background would be white. And then we just paste in the SVG. Let's save and let's see. So we have the white background and then the text inside. So this is looking good. Now let's add the rating text inside of this text extra small of 52, object of cover margin top of five. So, and then we'd also need some drop shadow. So we'd add the arbitrary value here. So margin X and then margin bottom at a border just so that we can see how this looks to reduce the opacity a bit. And then we'd add the background. So we'd use the style tag and would add background. Instead of that, we're going to be using linear gradient. And within that, we're going to be specifying the gradient shade. So first we want them to start from top to bottom. And then these are the two shades that we want. Let's save and yeah, it looks good. We're going to import the BG. And then we're going to add the class of relative to the parent. And then we're going to add a div with inset to zero and position absolute. And this is going to be going behind everything. 
So we're going to set the z-index to 0. So this is why we had the z-index of 10 to this. And then what we're going to do is we'd add the image with the background and we'd set the height and width to full and object to cover. Let's save and we have the pattern. Now let's add some opacity. So now let's start making it dynamic. First, let's look at the card stacker component. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having multiple such cards and we want them to stack on top of each other. So for that, what we're going to be doing is here, we would basically create the card stacker and we take in the data, basically would have an array of objects, which we're going to be looped through. And then after looping them, we're going to be for each individual object, we're going to render out one individual card. And then for each individual card, for each individual object, we're going to render this card. So first, let's create the parent div for this card stacker. So let's call it flex. And then let's add a specific class of card stacker, which we're going to be adding in the CSS in the style in the index or CSS later. After this is done, we're going to add some padding. And then here for each individual data, we're going to map through and then we're going to add for each specific data and then the index, we're going to take the card component and render that out. Now this won't render anything since this card stacker is not getting used. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to add all the different images. So I have five images and then also I've imported the card stacker. And then I'm going to be creating an array when we're going to have five separate objects with different values and also images, including the background colors. So all the different cards would have a different linear gradient background color. So those would be coming in from here. And then here we pass in the card stacker, we pass the data. So if I save, you won't see any changes. The reason for that is because the card component is not dynamic yet. So to make it dynamic, what we're going to be doing is here, we're going to be taking in title, subtitle, ring, and then background colors. And then here in the background color. So this background color would come from here. You see, it has uh, an object of top and bottom. So we're going to separate them out. So we have the top separately and also the bottom. And then here would add top and bottom. After that, would add the title here, the subtitle here. And then for each individual card would have the icon, same color as the top. So we'd add it here and then we'd add the rating and then the image alt tag as the title. And with that, the card is dynamic. Let's save. Now to use it, I think I need to modify here. So the card would take in a key since we're going to be rendering out multiple card components. So the DOM needs to know that each of them are unique. So for that, we'd pass in this key. And here the key would be index. For the title would be each data dot title, each data dot subtitle, rating, background colors, image, and let's say if, uh, all right, now here you would see that we have this class name. What this does is basically, let's add here a class name and let's save as of now, just so that it throws no errors. Let's save, let's keep it maybe empty. Now you would see that we have different backgrounds, but we also need different images. Why is it not working? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have yet to add the image. So we'd instead of adding this, we just add the, I, the image here. And instead of image one, we could just add image. Let's save. Wait, oh. This needs to be in lowercase image and here we just change that to image. Let's save. And now, as you can see, we have, we have different images and also the card renders out differently for different, um, values. So, so there's that. So we need some other changes as well. So the height needs to be fit. 
width also needs to be fit. That's safe, right? But this creates a problem and that is each of them have different image size. So for that, instead of only giving width, we also would give a height of 52. And now looks good. Instead of cover, this would now be contain. All right. And then let's remove the border. We don't really need. Now, what we want is we also need this class name. The reason for that is because when we hover, basically they would be stacking on top of each other. So for that, I want a negative margin. So to do that, what we can do is to add the class name. And now what we want to do in the car stacker is we're going to check. So if the car is not the first one, so we're going to check if the index is not equal to zero, no, which is basically the first one. If that is not the case, then we want to render something. If not, then we're going to leave it empty. So what do we want to render if it is not the first? If it is not the first, add a negative margin left of 32, which is 128 pixels. Let's save. Now, as you can see that the images are on top of each other, but still there is an issue with the Z index thing. You see the text is... Uh, on top of, so the text of the first is on top of the second and whatnot. It looks really horrible. So to do that, we need a basic Z index for all the cards. So we're going to give it a Z index of 10 to all. And when you save, nice. Now, the next thing that we want to do is, yeah, so we basically want to check if this is not the first one. If this is not the first one, then we want to add a negative margin. And then also we need a shadow. Let's save now. You can see if this is not the first one for second, third, fourth, and rest, we'd have some shadows. And then what we can do is on hover, we could have some effects. So let's say I hover any card. So whenever we hover over any card, we want them to translate Y to maybe negative 10. We have the translate, but it doesn't really have any smooth effect. So to ease it, we could add here transition, all, duration of 300 milliseconds, and add a space. And with that, we have a smooth transition. But there's one more thing that we want to add, and that is when we hover over any of the card, we want um, we want them to spread out. So to do that, let's add an individual card class here. And if you look at the CSS here, what I did is whenever you hover over that individual, so remember when we were adding this card stacker class here. So the reason for that was because in the CSS, whenever we hover with the card stacker, so we wanted to target the card component, individual card components. And instead of having a margin left, of minus 120 pixels, we just add a margin left of 10 pixels. And with that, when we hover, they basically spread out just like that. And then we can hover over them. And when we hover over each individual card, they slide up, you see? And yeah, meet you guys in the next video. Subscribe if you're new, if you haven't subscribed yet. And like the video if you liked it. Meet you guys in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.